Once again, Rampados puts in the work in today's battle thanks to its excellent coverage and massive attack stat. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we have a great battle against Marco, some random I found online. Be sure to join the Discord server, it's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now. There is a link in the description down below. For any reminders, drop a like on the video and be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon Wi-Fi battle content. Here are the teams, let me know who you think will win in the comment section down below and stick around till the end to find out if you're right. So if Without further ado, let's jump straight into the battle. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Marco. So they're going to lead off with Jed the Treasure Hunter, the Vika Vault, as we lead off with Cuddles the Ninetales. So they're definitely going to get up sticky webs here, I would say, but we can just encore them into that and then go into Rampados and do some serious damage to something on their team. So I'm going to get my Aurora Veil up. There we go, Aurora Veil is up, and we are now officially bulkier than we were before. And then they go for the Sticky Webs as expected, so Sticky Webs are up, which is great. So that's absolutely fine. Um, now we're going to Encore them into the Sticky Web. They actually withdraw, so that's fair enough. They're going to withdraw, that's a good play. And they're going to go into what? Salzy the Rank Master, which is going to be the Garganical. Interesting, so Garganical comes in. Encore fails, of course. Now, I don't really have much for Garganacle. Other than a Milotic, I could flip turn on it. Um, but I feel like they go for an Iron Defense here. So I am leaning towards the Milotic to get that Scold off. I don't really have much for Garganacle, do I? They've just seen Encore, so they're not going to set up an Iron Defense against me, that's for sure. Let's go Milotic first, and then we'll flip turn on it. And go back into something else to handle it. So let's see how this plays out first. So Nirvana's going to come in. Which is my, my low tick. Nice and shiny. Got to love it. Um, we get some sticky webs. But we're going to get that competitive boost. Which is what I'm thinking, right? We get that competitive boost. We should be able to do some decent damage. They do go for a salt cure. Which is unfortunate. But it doesn't do much damage until it does the actual salt curing. In which case it does a lot of damage. So... That's unfortunate. Like, we're able to nearly fully recover the Salt Cure damage from the leftovers. But this damage here, it's going to sting. It does sting quite a bit. So, now that we've got that in place, we've got the competitive boost. Let's go for a Scald. There isn't really a lot that wants to take a Scald from this thing either. They might go Vika Vault. But I don't think they will. Yeah, yeah Jet, Jet the Treasure Hunter comes in. So, there we go. The Vika Vault comes in. Now, we should be faster than the Vika Vault. So, we'll go for a Scald anyway. Plus two. It does a lot of damage. Um, and we're going to some leftover recovery. So I, I'm leaning towards staying in. But I'm also leaning towards not staying in because we don't have speed because of the sticky webs. I just realized. Um, and even though we're specially defensive AF, we don't really want to have to do that. So let's go into gouging fire. Gouging fire resists both stabs from the Vika Vault. So we should be good to go here and go for a Dragon Claw. So there we go. Vesuvius comes in like so. We are going to not get any, uh, any Sticky Webs damage because of the Heavy Duty Boots. They go for a T-Bolt, which is going to do nothing to us because of the Aurora Veil. Now we go for a Dragon Claw. They do withdraw. They're probably going to go into Garganacle once again. I had to guess. Yes, Salzy comes in the Garganacle, which is fine. Let's see how much Dragon Claw does to this first before we start making any assumptions. So that does nothing. So I'm going to assume they are a defensive set. They even have leftovers, which is interesting. So... Let's see how this plays out for us. So I'm going to go... Hmm, I'm going to go back into my low tick and go for a recover this time. I think I'm going to go my low tick and go for a recover. Just so I can get that competitive boost once again and threaten this thing out. Pretty much what I'm going for. So we'll go my low tick. There we go. Sticky webs are going to take effect. Like so. There we go. And then we're going to get that nice and powerful competitive boost. Which is going to boost our spe special attack to sky high levels. Which is great. They do go for a salt kill once again. Um, which does minimal damage, but obviously the next turn it's going to do more damage um, with the secondary effect that it has. So I'm going to go for a recover here. I think. I think recover is the best thing to go for. So they are going to withdraw the Garganacle this turn after I clicked recover. And they're going to go into Jet once again, the Treasure Hunter. So pretty good stuff from my opponent there. Pretty good play. Because we, we, we could have gone for a Scold there, but I think they've probably read us and thought, you know what, they're going to go for a recover here. So let's go ahead and switch out accordingly. So that's fair enough. So they actually, my opponent's actually playing pretty well right now. The team's really cool as well, like Salazzle and stuff. That's so cool to see. So cool to see. So 
Right, what are we going to do about this Vika Vault? Because Aurora Veil is worn off. I think it's time to go into our Alola Ninetales. I think. Or the Rampardo. No, not Rampardos. Rampardo is not a good play. I guess Gouging Fire is still a good play to go for. Yeah, I'm going to go Gouging Fire. So we'll go ahead and go Gouging Fire. Like so. Vesuvius comes on in. There we go. Thunderbolt comes through. It is resisted, so we should still take it like a champ. No paralysis, please. There we go. Nicely done. So, now I'm leaning towards going for a Dragon Claw again, because what we're going to do here is either going to KO the v -Court like it has done, or they're going to go Garganacle and then go for a Recover. So, I'm glad we took out the v Vault, because that's a threat to my Milotic gone out the window right there. In comes Lina, which is something else. So, that's a nice and shiny Excadrill, which is cool. Now, I believe Excadrill outspeeds us, and it could be Scarfed for all we know. So, I am going to play it safe, and I'm going to go into Corviknight real quick. So, that can get rid of the uh, the uh, Sticky Webs as well, which is going to be useful. So, we'll go into our Corviknight. We'll go for a Defog. They go for an EQ, which is fine. That's not going to do anything to Corviknight. And then we just go for a Defog to get rid of these Sticky Webs, because these Sticky Webs are going to be a pain of why. So, they're going to withdraw, as you would. They don't want to get hit by body press. And they're going to go into Queen, which is going to be the Salazzle, right? Yeah. Oh, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. I like shiny Salazzle. It kind of blends in with the background a bit in this stadium, but it's, it's fine. It's honestly fine. So the Sticky Web does disappear, which is great. Now we're going to have to switch out. Um, I'm going to go Milotic. Now, Milotic might seem like a strange one because, A, we don't have the competency from the Sticky Webs anymore. But we're also susceptible to status afflictions from Salazzle, like Toxic. Um, and I don't really want my Milotic to be toxic, but they actually go for a Venno Shock, which is interesting. So that's good to note. Good to note. Now, looking at the team, um, Milotic actually does really well against the team when it comes to damage output. Um, so I'm going to go for a Recover to get some health back. They are going to Terrastalize. Are they going to go Terra Grass here with Terra Blast? They might do, you know. Terra Poison. Okay, so they're going for that Venno Shock power. And also to be neutral to Scold, which makes a lot of sense. But we can now burn them. So they go for a Toxic, which is going to sting quite a bit in the long run. But we should be all right here. So we go for a Recover, and we're going to get some health back. There we go. Not worrying too much about it. And then what we'll do this next turn is we'll go for a Flip turn, because this Venno Shock is going to sting a lot. But I'm confident we can take it like an absolute champ. So they go for a Venno Shock, boosted by Terra, and the fact that we're poisoned as well. If you didn't know, Venoshock does more damage if you poison, pretty much. We go for a flip turn. That's going to do some chip damage to the Salazzo, but we are a reasonable amount of HP where it can still take on the Greninja pretty nicely. Um, so now that we've established that, I am going to go into Rampardos here, and I'm going to go for a Rock Slide or an Earthquake. I'm leaning more towards Earthquake because, obviously, the um, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Earthquake, pretty much, because we do resist the poison. Or is it ground types that resist the poison? Oh, you got me doubting myself now. Let's go for an Earthquake anyway. Um, they do withdraw. They haven't really got much of an Earthquake switching over the maybe Garganacle. And Lina's coming in right now, which is going to be the Excadrill. So let's see how much it takes from this Earthquake right here. So they are Mold Breaker. They're not Air Balloon, are they? No, they're not. We go for an EQ. Clean KO on the Excadrill, which is amazing. Nice read, Jack. Gotta love it. In comes Zabuza, the arrogant. That's cool because I, I nicknamed my Greninja Zabuza as well. Just a little fun fact for you. So, we, we've got to assume they're going to go for Hydro Pump or Surf here. So, I'm going to go into my Lotic to easily take it. And then we'll go for a Recover. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I do not want to keep my Rampardos in against the Greninja, that's for sure. We can still use it against the Salazzle later to get a KO, guaranteed KO on something. So let's see how this plays out for us. So Milotic comes in. They go for a Dark Pulse predicting the switch. To be fair, that probably would have killed Rampardos as well because Rampardos is frail. But it does mean that we are going to get two shotted by the Dark Pulse. So Milotic is going to have to go down here, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is at the end of the day. We know it's not Battle Bond because it's already showing Protean. And also Battle Bond can't be shiny. Um, so I'm going to go for a Recover just in case. But they do go for a Dark Pulse, which is going to KO our Milotic. So that is a shame. So Milotic goes down. Let's switch into something else. Going to bring in Galvantula now. Galvantula can actually has a Focus Sash for a start. Um, so we can definitely do some decent damage here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Bug Buzz. 
first. They go for a Dark Pulse. They stay in. Please don't flinch me. We don't get flinched, which is nice. Bug Buzz is going to come through and take out the Greninja. So they nearly KO'd us if it wasn't for the Focus Sash anyway. But it didn't even take us down to a Sash. So not too worried about that. Maybe I should have gone into Ninetales and got the Aurora Veil up. But it is what it is. So in comes Benji the Gourmet, which is going to be the Houndstone. Great, uh, is it Houndstone? Houndstone. Houndstone. They probably go for a Shadow Sneak here. I do not need my Galvantula anymore, so I'm going to go for a Sticky Web just in case. They do go for a Shadow Sneak. That's going to KO all Galvantula over here, um, which is a shame. But it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, we can still take on this Houndstone, no problem. We've got Pokemon for it. Um, just in case, because this is a random person I'm facing online, just in case their last respects, I kind of want to get the Aurora Veil up. And I kind of want to get the Aurora Veil up anyway. So I'm going to go into Ninetales real quick. There we go. Ninetales comes in. It's going to get the snow, which is great. There we go. Now I'm going to go for the Aurora Veil. It looks like they've gone for a move that's not priority. So I'm assuming they're not banded at least. As they go for Last Respect. There we go. So Last Respect comes through. It's not going to do nearly as much damage. Um, but it's damage nonetheless. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to Moonblast this thing into Oblivion. There we go. As it does a lot of damage to them, they go for a Last Respect. You know what's funny? I haven't actually faced a Last Respect Houndstone before. Pretty interesting. But knowing they're not choice um, or boosted in any way, we can safely bring in other Pokemon to take care of this thing. So I'm going to go into Gouging Fire now. Gouging Fire can definitely take care of this, no problem. There we go. And then we'll just go for a Flare Blitz because we don't mess around with no threats. So Flare Blitz comes through. Down goes the Houndstone. Down it goes, but we're now we're susceptible to be able to take out by the Salazzle. So we need to be very careful with our next few turns because that um, Garganacle is right there. So in comes Solzy. There's the Garganacle. Nice and shiny as before. I'm going to go for an EQ. No, because they, they probably go for a Salt Cure here, right? Or um, So if they're going for a Salt Cure... We should Dragon Dance first. So I'm going to Dragon Dance first. They might Iron Defense because we've got all physical attackers left. So I'm going to go for a Dragon Dance. And I'm going to hope they're not going to go for an Iron Defense here and they go for a Salt Cure. Salt Cure comes through. It's going to do some decent damage. Not too much because the Aurora Veil is there. Um, but now obviously we're going to get Salt Cure this next turn. So they probably go for Recover Sp uh, Stall here. Which is fine. In, in a way. Not really. It's not that fine but... Um, it's, it is what it is at the end of the day. So we're going to go for an EQ. I'm going to go for an EQ because they can't, they're not going to Terror. Pretty sure they might have already Terrored, but we go for an EQ. They go for a Stealth Rocks. Interesting. So they go for a Stealth Rocks. So we might actually be able to push through this Garganacle right now, which is nice because Garganacle is a pain. So the snow is going to stop. They are going to pop their leftovers, of course. And now I'm leaning towards going for another EQ. Um, just because we're going to do more damage this way. Because they're going to recover back some health. But we want to leave it so Rampardos can take them on. So I'm going to go for another EQ. So they go for a Protect. Which is fair enough. That also leaves them in the same situation. Like if they went for a Recover instead of a Protect there. They would have been at the same amount of health. So that still works out nicely for us. As obviously we're going to bounce right off them. And then the Soul Cure of course is going to take out Vesuvius. Which is unfortunate. So now we'll just go into Rampardos. In comes damage, the Rampardos. Now, it all comes down to this. Can Rampardos take out this Garganacle in one hit with a Earthquake from that health? And I believe it can. So I'm going to go for an Earthquake. They do go for Protect just to scout to see what we're going to do probably. But it's going to fail because they protected the turn before. I guess there was no harm in trying it. But no, they go down to that Earthquake because Rampardos' attack stat is through the roof. Powering it with Life Orb to give it a point one times 2. Now it all comes down to whether we can live a Veno Shock or whatever move this thing wants to go for under Aurora Veil. So in comes the Queen. Nice and powerful, nice and shiny. Gotta love it. I'm gonna go for the EQ because I don't wanna miss a, a Rock Slide. So I'm gonna go for the EQ once again. They go for the Veno Shock, boosted by Terra. Can we live? I think we can. Oh yeah, it bounced off. So it is not very effective against Ground and Rock. So there we go. So we take them out with the Rampardos. Rampardos wins us the game. Rampardos did really well this game, you know? Really well. So that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. So GG Marker was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed it. We managed to not get Garganacle stalled, which is always an achievement. So that is going to be the game.
But anyway, here is the team tryout. If you want, use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.